over the last two years, you know, Medicare for All has maintained its popularity in spite of the fact that American citizens have been bombarded with nonstop propaganda. And unfortunately for anyone who is pushing these types of industry talking points like Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden, you know, uh, it's going to be even more popular now during a pandemic because you can't make the case that we love our employer sponsored health insurance if everyone is losing their jobs. And a new poll just came out by Harris X that confirms people still really want Medicare for all, perhaps more so than ever. And as Newsweek points out here, 69% nice of registered voters support Medicare for All. That includes 88% of Democrats, 68% of independents, and 46% of Republicans. So the implication of this is that it is really, really not just out of touch, but dangerous for Democrats like Joe Biden to be so openly hostile towards the notion of Medicare for All. As this headline from Common Dreams puts it, it's not a tenable position any longer. Like all of the talking points that were fed to Democrats throughout the course of this primary by in industry insiders, you can't use them anymore because they're no longer relevant. You can't tout the benefits of your healthcare being attached to your employer if people are losing their jobs, as I stated at the beginning of this segment. And that was never a persuasive argument because people realize that if they lose their jobs, they lose their employer-sponsored insurance, or just on a dime, their employer can change their insurance, which is why Bernie Sanders pushed for Medicare for All and pushed for it being free at the point of service and not being attached to your employers. But everyone condemned Bernie Sanders. He was basically the only one who stood strong when it comes to Medicare for All and it being free at the point of service and the need to abolish private uh, insurers. And um, everyone shot him down, said it's, you know, unfeasible, it'll never pass, it's not politically expedient. They didn't make that argument, but, you know, we know what they were saying and that it's too expensive. Well, now we see how necessary Medicare for All is and how popular it is. But yet, Democrats still aren't embracing it. Joe Biden running a presidential campaign won't embrace something that 88% of the base supports and 46% of Republicans. And if you believe that winning over independence is important, everyone should. Well, if 68% of independents think Medicare for All should be codified into law, how are you not adopting, adopting this policy and pledging to fight for it at every step of the way? To not adopt this policy shows one of two things, or maybe both. One, you're such a gigantic sellout that you would never even for a minute signal support for a policy that your donors would hate. Or two, you don't want to win or don't care. That's where we're at. Now, on top of Medicare for All, there are other progressive policy proposals that need to be addressed, need to be proposed, especially by leaders like Joe Biden, if you want him to win. Like, you can take, you know, a more incremental approach. You can adopt a really bold policy, albeit temporarily, for the duration of this pandemic. You could propose something like universal basic income as long as we have to self-quarantine. You can propose rent cancellation. Uh, and you have no reason not to, given the new data that we have that suggests it's very popular. As Common Dreams reports, 55% of Americans support rent cancellation and mortgage suspension. That includes 67% of Democrats, 48% of Independents, 42% of Republicans. So imagine how popular any Democratic nominee would be if they actually took one popular policy and ran with it. Like, and it's not even these types of common sense policies. They won't even take something that is not controversial in 2020, like legalizing weed recreationally. Joe Biden doesn't support the legalization of weed um, recreationally at the national level. He says this should be left to the states. I mean, to be that out of touch in 2020, I mean, how do you not conclude that they are not actually serious about winning? Any Democrat in 2020 who is running for any position of power, who doesn't full-throatedly endorse Medicare for All, who isn't supporting popular policies, they're proving that they don't actually care about winning. Maybe they're not serious about getting power or they're just so painfully stupid that they don't know what policies to embrace because they have these consultants in their ear who, you know, get paid millions of dollars to give them bad advice. I mean, this is common sense. If 69% of the country supports a policy like Medicare for All, it's not just good policy, it's good politics 
to embrace that. And the fact that Democrats won't coalesce around this, it shows you how far the party has fallen. It just may be too far gone. The entire system might just be irredeemable. This is something that I'm grappling with and I'm trying to figure out how to proceed knowing this fact, right? So I don't know what to say. Like, as I see more and more of these types of polls that confirm the popularity of these types of policies, I no longer get excited as I used to. I get more, I guess, demoralized, if you could believe it, because the fact that these are so popular, we should get them. If we live in a representative republic, why aren't we getting these policies? Why isn't anyone in the Democratic Party proposing this and running away with this? Why isn't Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer coming together and formulating some type of response? I mean, I think you and I know the answer, but it's just, it's so frustrating. So it's like, as I see the popularity of these types of policies increase, I grow more disappointed because that should just bolster the case for them. But, you know, the fact that it's not going to get us closer to these policies, there's just this inherently sad fact about that, you know, and I don't know what to say. We live in hell and everything is stupid and that's the way it's going to continue to be for the foreseeable future. Beta male, not a beta male.